Hi there! Recently, Aftershoot released a new version of their AI editing app, Aftershoot Edits, with support for Capture One. Now you can train a personal AI editing profile based on your Capture One adjustments and auto-edit hundreds of images in a matter of minutes. For the last two weeks, I've been extensively testing the capabilities of the new app. Even though Aftershoot Edits is still in beta and its auto-adjustments are not perfect, that's the first AI editing tool that I can actually use in my Capture One workflow. In this video, you will learn how to train your personal AI profile and what are the best practices of AI editing in Capture One. Also, you will see how to combine Aftershoot Edits with smart adjustments for the fastest image editing workflow. But first, there are only a few days left to get 30% off my new video course AI Powered Workflow for Photographers. In the course, you will learn how to automate your image editing workflow, speed up image calling, and set up an effective AI retouch system. Also, you will discover how to combine photos and AI-generated images and use AI tools to elevate your photography business. Start watching the course free of charge at alexandra.com slash course. Ok, now back to the AI editing. For the last two years, Aftershoot has been my go-to app for auto-image calling. I have already called more than 65,000 images with Aftershoot, and it saved me an enormous amount of time. Then, Aftershoot introduced an AI image editing feature called Aftershoot Edits. At first, it supported Lightroom only, but recently Aftershoot developers have added support for Capture One as well. Aftershoot Edits is in beta and currently it can auto-adjust these Capture One tools. White balance, exposure, high dynamic range, clarity and vignetting. Also, according to developers, they have already begun work on these tools. Levels, Curve, Color Editor, Black and White, and Dehaze. If you are new to Aftershoot, go to alexanraw.com slash after to download the app. The Aftershoot call has a 30-day free trial, and Aftershoot Edits is currently available free of charge. Also, you can save 15% on the subscription using this code Alex on Raw. Ok, now let's create our first AI profile and test it in Capture One. There are two things you need to know about profile creation. First, Aftershoot requires at least 2,500 images to train a profile. However, developers recommend to upload 5,000 or more images for better profile quality. I can confirm here, my profiles trained on 5 and 7,000 images work way more accurately and reliably. The second and even more crucial factor is the presence of layers in your Capture One adjustments. In the current beta, Aftershoot doesn't recognize layers on your images, skipping all layer corrections when training an AI profile. This feature doesn't affect event photography, since my typical event editing looks like this. First, I adjust exposure, white balance, and levels. Then, I apply contrast and HDR corrections. Finally, I work with Clarity and Color Editor if needed. Most of these tools are already available for AI editing, or Aftershoot developers are working on their support. I use layers as little as possible, focusing on fast batch editing. However, layers are an essential part of my portrait editing workflow. 
Usually, I set an optimal exposure to make the overall image look good and then recover highlighted areas with layers. Since Aftershoot ignores layers, it recognizes my portrait images this way and trains the profile accordingly. Such overexposed areas are not an issue by itself, it's just a part of my editing style. Yet, this is why it makes sense to train separate AI profiles for different types of edits. Let's train two profiles. The first profile will contain only event photography shots. The second profile will be trained on studio portraits only. To train a profile, you need to upload one or several Capture One catalogs with your edits. As you have added the catalogs, you can choose images for training by their folders or collections. Also, you can filter out images of particular ratings, color tags, or camera models. Usually, it takes a few hours to train a profile and this is the only moment when Aftershoot requires an internet connection. All further AI editing happens locally on your computer. Training an AI profile is the most critical step. If you are not satisfied with AI edits, you need to train your profile again with different images. Aftershoot also offers pre-trained profiles, but currently they are available for Lightroom only. Ok, our profiles are ready, let's test the event photography profile first. To auto-adjust images, you need to add a catalog and choose images for editing the same way we did when we trained the profile. There are check marks to crop and straighten your images, but in the first beta they don't work properly. The auto editing goes really fast. It takes about 2 minutes to auto adjust 154 images on my M1 MacBook Pro. As the editing is finished, you can open your Capture One catalog right from Aftershoot. I will create new variants of all images to make before-after comparisons easier. Ok, in general that is pretty close to my editing style. I would set pretty much the same exposure, HDR and contrast. I always prefer warm color temperatures when it comes to festive events. Well, this one I would make a bit brighter. These are good. This one should be darker. I like that the editing is consistent when it comes to a series of similar shots. By the way, if Aftershoot set incorrect exposure or white balance to a series of images, you can quickly batch adjust them with speed edit keys. Ok, now let's auto edit images taken in more challenging conditions of a winter day with hard sunlight. It took Aftershoot less than 3 minutes to auto adjust these 251 photos, so let's see the results. I would edit these shots the same way. Oh, this shot has an incorrect black point. Aftershoot doesn't adjust levels yet, so it makes sense to select all images and auto-adjust them. Capture One will correct every shot individually in accordance with your levels clipping thresholds. Ok, 
Okay, here I see a mistake. These images should be brighter and have more contrast. It seems that massive shadow areas have confused the AI engine. By the way, this shot is another example of the importance of auto levels. Without it, the image looks pretty flat. Also, I think there were no images like this in my training set, and Aftershoot doesn't know how to deal with such snowy, low contrast shots. At the same time, Aftershoot has adjusted this challenging shot really nicely. I like how it works with HDR sliders. For instance, here it applied very mild adjustments because there is nothing to recover in shadows. It's just a black background. There are slight mistakes in exposure and white balance, but the auto adjustments are generally pretty balanced. Now let's see how Aftershoot will handle indoor images. For many scenes, Aftershoot offers pretty balanced adjustments. Also, it follows my editing style. I always prefer a slight magenta look over greenish skin tones for event shots. I would make minor corrections to some images, but generally they look fine. Oh, okay, this series is definitely misadjusted. These massive white areas confused the AI engine, resulting in underexposed edits. Also, it seems that Aftershoot has gone overboard following my magenta preference. However, there is a simple way to fix such issues with exposure and white balance. All you need to do is to edit one image, and set it as a reference in the Smart Adjustments tool. Now I'm going to select Misadjusted Images, click Apply, and Capture One will auto-fix all these images. If you are not familiar with Smart Adjustments, it doesn't copy and paste the settings. It sets the correct exposure and white balance adjustments according to your reference shot and individual features of selected images. Finally, let's test Aftershoot with some portrait images. AI editing looks good on portraits that don't require layer corrections. For instance, here I just need to auto-adjust levels to get a nice final result. Similarly, here An impressive result for auto adjustments. If I need to increase exposure on a series of shots quickly, I use speed edit keys, like here. Images that require layer correction might look overexposed, but in fact, they need a local adjustment just as I would do with manual editing. By the way, the smart adjustments also work great with a series of portrait images when you need to modify exposure and white balance. Sometimes Aftershoot sets incorrect white balance on portraits especially if their style differs from the images you use to train the AI profile. But we're talking about the very first beta version of the app, so I hope developers are going to improve the consistency with future upgrades. Also, it might be a matter of my training images, I plan to continue experimenting with them. Still, already now, Aftershoot is 
extremely useful for reportage and event photography. Currently, I'm working on a new lesson about aftershoot for my video course AI-powered workflow for photographers. These are the final days when you can get the course with a 30% discount and access all published and upcoming tutorials. Start watching the course free of charge at alexandra.com/course.